Here's the story of a person living beside the Myra Quarry, located just outside of Fredericton, on the railroad. In 2014, the quarry was given speedy approval to do business in a protected area for environment over the third largest aquifer in Canada and to disturb the quality of life for many people living along the railroad. The whole process violated all kinds of rules and there's been no transparency and no accountability as to how that happened in the first place. Over the past six years, that quarry has been protected and no one can figure out why. But the people who live there have not been protected by the Department of Health, Department of Environment, Department of Natural Resources, or any other political means to try to get some sense of justice, some sense of accountability, some change. So here's their story, first person, like a victim impact statement. Would be really nice if you could feel what they feel and imagine what it's like to live there and to know that this could happen in your backyard just as easily. Uh, it ticks me off the most. Um, the fact that so many rules were broken in order for that quarry to go into business in our little piece of paradise. That's what, that's what ticks me off the worst, is that there are so many rules and regulations in our lives that we all abide by from speeding to uh, any other way you could break the, the rules to, you know, not filing your taxes. And then we end up having this thrown upon us six years ago without the, the governing bodies following the proper rules. Anyone talk to you guys at all? Uh, we became aware of it through Jerry um, because of the, the meeting that was about to happen, which I look back on now was just a, a rubber stamp. It was just a formality that they had to hold. Uh, they were probably hoping that, uh, that, there, that there wouldn't be any uh, backlash or, or, or negativity towards this going in, right? So. Um, it's affected, it's affected us, my, my wife's business, she's worried about her clientele going out onto the road, it's affected us, uh, the dust, we live our lives trying not to get cancer, uh, hoping that, uh, that the things you've done in the past will, will not erupt in the future for cancer, and now with the silicone dust, uh, we're forced, we're forced into a cancer creative world that we have zero control of, and I feel that because of that, nobody really, or nobody really cares about our health and well-being on that side of things, and if we do get sick, who's going to take care of us? Well, it's going to be the government, but the government has caused this due to the the not playing by the rules it's not it's it's a it's a catch-22 it's a round circle right so our bedroom is at the back of our house when they put the road in in the building uh, there's a way building at the top of the just before you cross the bridge there's a light on that building um i normally don't keep my blind closed at night because it's usually been dark for the last 30 or well, i guess i guess the last 27 years uh, I don't know how big a light bulb that is, but it seems to attract my attention no matter if I stir in the night at all, that piece of light seems to get me. And I think that that would probably be the, I, I would like to, I would like to go break it out, I would like to go shoot it out, but I'm not that kind of person, right, so I pull my blind down even farther. That is, that is probably one of the, uh, one of my biggest pet, feet, pet peeves. The rest of it that happens, uh, the, the, the dust, the, the traffic, which is all part of the overflow of the, of the, the quarry of what it does. Uh, that's its business. Uh, so, yeah, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, dust, the dust, uh, that, that's, a, that's a bothersome thing. Um, I'm afraid, and this happened a couple of weeks ago, when the truck lost its load on the railroad and they sent down the sweeper truck and there was huge plumes of dust and uh, this, this sweeper machine and there was no traffic control and, and what happened that day really, really, I was afraid, and this is me thinking ahead in life, that if somebody gets killed in my driveway, 
I have to deal with it the rest of my life. No matter who it is or how it happens, it happened in my front of my driveway. I was pretty upset with the cloud of dust and, and I called a commercial vehicle. Um, of course, she was a dispatcher and she couldn't, she would have to get hold of an officer. So uh, anyway, so I hung up from her and then I called the RCMP non-emergency number. And I said, I'd like you to, I talked to dispatch and I'd, I'd like you to send an officer out because what's happening right now is a major traffic violation as far as I'm concerned. There's no, uh, the people that drove through that dust would be worse than a snowstorm. And, uh, and the dispatcher's um, a direct quote to me was, well, what would be any different than a snowstorm? So I just, I just, I just, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a pretty laid back guy. So I just said, uh, I said, well, obviously I said we need to end, the, end of this conversation because you believe that I'm wasting your time. And right now you're wasting my time. Fortunately, I did get a call back from CV about 20 minutes later and I told him what happened and I said, and I told him that it wasn't good. I said, and, and I said, I don't think that anything will change until somebody just get killed or hurt very bad, which is an unfortunate way for things to have to happen moving, uh, moving forward with this, right? Well, I do, I do not mind telling you the numbers. Um, I was assessed at about $210,000 and it dropped. Seventy thousand dollars in assessment value, which worked out to be very little difference in the amount of tax you pay on a on a on a thirty three year living in there. I said you need to give me my taxes back for the last thirty three years on that rate, not just this year and the, and and the, and the subsequent years. Uh, I after after he said that that was going to happen, I thought I had maybe shot myself in the foot because of the value of your house. When you go to sell, a lot of times the first thing they look at is the, is the, the tax value of your house, right? Oh, what are the, what's the tax value? And there's a give and take on the retail value. So I thought maybe I shot myself in the foot and I don't know if I have or haven't yet. My, my wife wants to, uh, my wife wants to move. Uh, she wants to get away from the traffic. And that's something that we had talked about eventually happening at some point. But not being forced uh, out of there earlier than what we had wanted to, you know. Kind of move into town, maybe closer to the walking trail, you know, we get a little bit older, we can have more, have uh, have a lot more e easy, easier to go for a bike ride than loading them up and going into town, right? Because you wouldn't dare, you wouldn't dare bike on the railroad road a at any time right now. And if you did, then I mean, you must be one, you must have walked a bicycle on the railroad road some bad to do that, so. I've had a couple Fridays off. We've been home Friday mornings before we've headed out camping. Uh, I'm out washing my truck, and it's the constant. It's like it's like a loud fan that's oscillating. It's like, and it's constant all the time. Nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, it seems Fridays always seems to be. Uh, I don't know if it's if it's busier or, or I just think it's busier. Uh, I get to go to work every day. I don't. Ha I'm not at home every day. My wife's at home every day. Uh, she's the one that says it's incredibly bad. Um, so I only experience it for a little bit and, uh, of, of my week. Uh, it still goes on after supper. It's going on at 6.30, 6 o'clock in the morning now. Uh, the other day I took my garbage can out and there was you know, four or five trucks went by. And the dust that they blew off just driving on, the, on, on, a, on, a, you know, on a regular day, it's just incredible. It's just incredible. And those trucks are supposed to have the cloth. Over top, so, and I've seen a couple going with the cloth drop thing, but that doesn't stop the wind from sucking in underneath and pulling the dust out. Uh, it's, it's, it's the airplane wing effect at that point, right? So it actually, I think sometimes it creates for more dust. I followed an empty truck going out the other day that the dust was coming out of it more than a full truck. My wife left and, and she got down the road and met a rock truck, or met a truck hauling, that was coming out, was coming and going, and and she got a, she got a, her, um, it broke her windshield in her, in her new car, and she was quite upset about it. And actually, she was crying about it. And I said, okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Okay, it's, it's all good. It's just a windshield, it's, you know. So I called, uh, I called Myra, and I called uh, the first day I spoke with a, a reasonably nice person on the other end. And I said, I'd like to speak to Adrian Pembridge, please. And she said, what's this concerning? I said, well, my wife's windshield just got broken. And she said, uh, okay, I'll have him call you back. So he never called me back. I can only imagine that he's, there's thousands of phone calls that he never calls back. 
the next day I called back and I got a not as pleasant woman and I s explained my situation again and she said well well that's not our problem and I said well I said it is your problem because it's your rock from your quarry that was on a truck that I met that that my wife met that was improperly secured load I said it happened to be one of the red trucks that had Hogan written on the door and then she said, well, did she get the license number? I said, my wife, isn't in, my wife isn't in the business of chasing trucks for license numbers. So, luckily enough, when he did call, uh, he did pay for the windshield. That's uh, the w one thing. I suppose it was the, uh, I'm going to appease this one, you know, bad neighbor of mine by giving him a windshield. So, had he not paid for it, I'm, I suppose my insurance would have paid for it. So, yeah. uh, have I complained to him? Um, no. No, I haven't complained to him. I just, um, because of the rules and the government breaking the rules, I mean, I'm just kind of like, what good would it do now? It's in place. We don't have, there's no power to change it now. I don't see it ever changing until at some whatever point the, that the rock runs out, right? And that's going to be, I'll, I'll probably be dead and in the ground by that time, so. And you've heard about the, the, the guy with the farm who was on the edge of town and, and then the city or the town grew around his farm and then the city came along and said we don't want you to farm anymore because your your animals stink and there's noise from the machinery well i feel that that has happened to us as be, we're the ones that are you know the, the the people that have lived there for the long time and uh, there was no real consideration given to us being long-term residents right so that that's that's my best that's the best thing that i have to say is that Ooh, we got stuck. We got stuck. They're sticking it to us.